Hi there, welcome to some DIY. In this video, we're looking at the MetaQuest 3 and connecting it to a PC. Okay, so the previous video we did, which I'll link to up here, uh, we connected the Quest 3 headset into a Microsoft Teams meeting using Microsoft Me Mesh and immersive spaces in Teams. Um, so if you're interested in that, jump over to that video. This video is more taking that a little bit further and connecting the headset and to control a PC. So this isn't connecting via a, a wire, this is connecting wirelessly uh, to control remotely a PC, a Windows PC. So you can use this to connect into any laptop or any desktop machine. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll step through the things that you need to do this and then kind of demo what it looks like and the things you can do to kind of expand the experience as well. Uh, so first of all, we'll jump across to the PC uh, onto my laptop just to show you the software you need running on the PC initially. Okay, so we're on the desktop currently here on my laptop. So I've got a Huawei MateBook uh, laptop, nothing special. Um, it's not a gaming PC, anything like that. It's just a standard kind of laptop that I use day to day. Uh, so on the desktop view now, um, I've got the Meta Quest website here loaded that I wanted to show. Uh, so this is on the Meta website directly. It's how to use your computer in VR in the Meta Horizon Workroom specifically. This kind of gets you going. So you can use the Horizon Workrooms um, application on the Quest 3 or the Quest 2. Um, and there is a beta app on there, which I will show on the demo on the headset as well. Um, so, but it's the same process for both. Um, so you can see there's a couple of links, one for Mac OS and one for Windows. I've got a Windows machine, so we'll do Windows. So simply click on the download button or the, or the link to it, and it will download the application. Um, it's a simple exit. I've downloaded it a couple of times there, as you can see, just wanted to show the download process, but simply install that and you'll have um, the Meta Quest remote desktop application on your machine. So it opens up simply as a window like that. You can see currently, I've got no headset there uh, available to connect to, um, but you can do all the connectivity from the headset itself once you're up and running. Uh, in here, some simple settings, nothing much whatsoever about starting the Quest remote desktop application on the startup of your PC, which this does and skipping confirmation when connecting to headset, which I do. So you don't have to confirm each time you want to connect, it kind of speeds up the process. Um, so that's everything on there, ready to go really, nothing more you need to do. Um, so what we'll do, we'll jump over to the headset, kind of show you what to do on the headset and how it works. Currently, I've got a single screen on the laptop, no monitors connected, nothing at all, and we'll see how that looks. And I will add in monitors, or maybe not monitors, but some extra screens to show you how that looks. Okay, so I've got the headset on. I'm recording from the headset too, just to show the full process and kind of show what's going on on the desk. So currently got color pass through on, on the headset, which hopefully looks good on video. You kind of see where the lighting, it kind of makes things a little bit blurry on that light there. Uh, I'm recording here, as you can see here, you've got me on the headset. Um, so we're on, I've got the laptop here, which is not connected to anything whatsoever. Um, it's just literally battery powered at the moment. Uh, you can hopefully just about see the MetaQuest Room desktop, uh, remote desktop app running there. Um, I'm in color pass through so you can see exactly what's going on. Um, and within, within uh, on the, on the MetaQuest 3, I'm gonna go into app library and you've got the Horizon Workrooms beta. Um, so you'll see as well, you've got the remote display beta, 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 uh, but we'll use the Horizon Workrooms first of all, because that is what the one that obviously it says on the website. So I'm going to jump into that now. So currently it gets rid of color pass through, but we can turn that on soon, back on soon. Don't worry about that. So we'll just let things load up, which won't take t at all. Okay, so I'm now in my virtual work workroom. So you can see I've got my office in front of me here. So I've kind of got things set up already. Okay, so I'm in, in here. I was on the different screen there, but I was in the office view. Um, but if I go into down here, I've got the computer view. Let me do it on, um, um, I'm using um, a hand tracking for this. So I've got the computer view here. When you're on the same network as your um, machine, it will auto find your laptop. So you can see on here, I've got the computer, which says uh, Houston's laptop. And you can see that it's still looking for computers, so it will do that automatically. If I go into the setup guide, it'll just tell you to download the remote desktop application, and that's all you need to do. When you're on the same uh, Wi-Fi network, it will find the computer if you've got the remote desktop application running on there, which I have, uh, which is brilliant. So you can see, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the Houston laptop, and I'm gonna connect into that there. 
This takes a few seconds just to kind of kick in. And you'll see, I've got the single screen of my laptop bang in front of me there. You can see, hopefully, uh, I've got the, if I can find my mouse, which is there. You can see that I've got the remote desktop uh, application running and you can see the Quest 3 headset connected there. Um, so I've currently got a single screen because I've literally got a single screen running. It is based on physical screens connected, is this. So you can see I've got the two side ones because I've previously connected two different monitors before. So if I try and connect one side, nothing will happen. It will look for a monitor connected, but there won't be a monitor, monitor connected because I've got nothing plugged in on the laptop. So that's that. Okay, so now we're back to that single screen view, my, my laptop view, which is great. Um, so you can see the computer there in front of me. I've got some settings in there, which is screen brightness and computer audio, and also connect automatically. So you can do this automatically. Uh, when you put the headset on, it'll connect when you're in the application to your laptop if everything's up and running, which is great. Nice and simple though, not much to change or do in there really. Um, so we've got the computer, which is there, as you can see. Home, which is some other things you can do with workrooms, but we're concentrating on that PC connectivity at the moment. So if I go into settings, you see my avatar looking at myself. Uh, you go into desk, and this is what you can see with the desk I previously had set up, um, which you can do at any point. You can reset the desk, do whatever you want. So I will reset this desk. So you can see now I'm in color pass through. You can see my laptop, see the camera. And what it's asking me to do is define the desk surface. So it's, it's asking for the surface you've got in front of you to just define it, to show where you are, where you sat. So then it can do color pass through onto the desk and obviously just determine if you've got any, uh, any keyboards to track as well. So I'm gonna take my um, controller. I'm gonna hover over the corner of my desk, press the back button and then simply, oops, I'll do it again. Simply drag. So I'll go to about there. So that's the desk area there in front of me. So now it's asking me to set the desk height. So I'm gonna take the controller, I'm gonna pop it onto the desk with it point touching, and I'm gonna press the back button. And that will confirm the desk height. Reset that and try that again. Take it there, press the back button, and then we'll confirm. So I'll confirm that and that's done. So um, that is the desk height set um, and the, the view of the desk, obviously at the right height and the kind of right size that I've got in front of me. So you'll see the other option in here, in the desk settings is a tracked keyboard. This is looking for a predefined list of keyboards that have been um, enabled within the Workrooms application. So if I go to new keyboard, you can see different brands in there. Now I don't have one of those keyboards. If I go into Logitech, for example, you can see there's four different types. Now these four different types have been there for a long time. I don't believe I've added to that recently. Um, so I won't be using any of them, but I'll just show you Dell, Logitech, sorry, I've shown you that, Microsoft and Apple. So it's ton there, there are multiple different options in there, which are quite common keyboards. Uh, I won't be doing that because I'm going to use the pass-through on the desk to actually see my physical keyboard. And uh, now the color pass-through is much better. So if I go back another one and then cancel that, and you can see I'm back to that home screen now. Okay, so the last thing from a settings perspective is customize office. So if I click on the customize office, you can see you can choose different views within the um, within your environment. So currently I've got the lobby dark setting on, but I'll just flick through those. If we went to Lake's cabin, you can see I'm sat in a nice uh, cabin, a wood lodge cabin or something there with a nice uh, nice setting. Uh, I've got a lobby bright, which is just a very bright environment, which is quite strong on the eyes actually. Uh, lobby dark, I do use that one because it's it is, it's a bit nicer on the eyes. It's not as uh, strenuous, uh, but you can have pass-through on. So you can go into full pass-through and you've literally got full pass-through. So I've got my laptop there. I've got the screen in front of me, uh, which is a little bit confusing because I've got another screen here on another, on another PC, uh, but that is color pass-through. But I will drop back to the lobby dark and that's kind of fully customized. Now you can see I've got this uh, rectangle section here. It's got just color pass-through on the desk. So I can see my keyboard, so that's not a key, that's a mouse. See my mouse and see a keyboard there. And I can fully use the keyboard, not a problem whatsoever, as long as it's well lit. Um, but yeah, you could have other things here. You can have your phone, so you can look at your phone for notifications. Um, 
you could have um, a cup of coffee for example so you could have a drink in there so i've got my cup there easily have a drink there um so yeah really good good to do easy and easy to do so literally a button on the desk here so if i press it and turn it off desk pass through is gone now but again do that and i'm not sure if there's a way of making that desk pass through area bigger uh, obviously you can have full pass through um so then you've got full pass through in the whole room which grays out the desk pass through option there anyway um so yeah full pass through or these different office customizations with the desk pass through enabled the, the other thing you've got which i don't actually use i've tried it but I've, i don't really see uh, a need for it myself is desk whiteboard so you can use this um to draw basically on your desk so i'll do this and i can use controller like so and you can draw on the desk with it um so yeah that's an option there to use but i haven't used it and don't really use it but really easy to turn on and calibrate um so yeah let me turn that back off that back on and there we go so we're kind of now ready to use the de the laptop that's connected i've got my mouse connected to the laptop so i can use a full screen in front of me to do anything on there now so i've got edge i jump over to edge i can go into a youtube video for example so we go into any old YouTube video. So we're going to someone else's MetaQuest 3 review, for example. Let's be realistic. The best thing about the Quest 3. And that's working absolutely fine. Um, you get audio coming through the, the headset as well. Um, so you can do a multitude of things in here, including joining a Microsoft Teams meeting from the actual desktop as well, which is great. Um, so that's everything there, customization wise, on a single monitor. So I've got my laptop connected, single monitor. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna try and connect it up to some to some different monitors. So we can, rather than having the single screen in front of us, we can get the two additional screens at either side as well, and really, really multitask in a virtual environment. Okay, so before we go and connect uh, into multiple laptops, I just wanted to first show you uh, the beta application, the other beta application on the on the Quest headset. I believe it came pre-installed. I don't remember actually installing it. Uh, so we're still in the in the Horizon Workrooms application here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, quit out of this app. So quit. So back to uh, full color pass through, as you can see there. Um, so I'm going to go here. It's called Remote Display. So it's within my app library. Um, it's called Remote Display. Um, and I'm going to just simply click on that. So this is using the exact same desktop for software uh, that's on there. It's the uh, remote desktop application. There's nothing extra running. Um, I did install the uh, this on another computer. This one here, this is the PC I've got running here. That was connected to that one. That's what that is. This is my laptop, Houston laptop. So if I click on this and connect, exactly the same way I would with uh, Horizon Workrooms. This should connect and it'll give me a single screen view of my laptop so you can see my laptop's over there and this is the screen the view of it here so if i use my mouse um i can then navigate around there so this is more of a quick single screen view directly from the menu um into basically showing you um your a, a remote view of your of your laptop um it's not that kind of enclosed VR environment, that immersive environment. It's just a single view into into your PC. Um, I'm not sure what the what the plan is from Meta here. Whether they're going to push out the remote display further, or expand on it, or get rid of workrooms. I'm I'm not sure. But this is an alternative use of it. It's kind of you can still multitask being in the here. So if I go into my app library into what um, I can jump between that and then WhatsApp quite easily so it seems more i don't know more of a lightweight streamlined version of of the remote desktop capability built on the actual headset but it's really easy to use and you can kind of because you've got the color password i can pop that over there i could be doing something else and be jumping back over to my laptop screen really easily um so it's a bit more flexible um it just doesn't give you that full immersive view that you get from horizon workrooms it also doesn't allow you which i've, I've realized through experimentation to view multiple screens at the same time so this will allow you to switch between multiple screens uh, multiple monitors you've got connect connected but it won't allow you to view them at the same time it just keeps this single window open 
So it's got its pros and its cons. So I just want to show that really quickly before we jump into connecting multiple um, pretend monitors to that machine. So what we'll do is I will do that now and we'll connect in the uh, USB dongles I've got to create these uh, false monitors. Right, the plan now is to connect the laptop, which is down here on the desk, um, into, well, not into some monitors, but you could simply connect it into a monitor and it would give you the two different screens. So your laptop screen and the, a, a virtual view of your monitor you've got connected. Now, if you don't have a monitor or you're on the go and you wouldn't have a monitor with you anyway, what you can get are these HDMI monitor um, extension dummies. So basically what it's doing is it's tricking your laptop or your PC or Mac. I don't know if it works on Mac actually, so I'll rescind that for now. But you pull this into your laptop, either directly into it, into a HDMI port or via a dongle, which is what I've got here. So I've actually got two of these HDMI, um, HDMI devices. So these trick your computer into thinking that there's a 4K monitor connected. So simply with these, I can add an additional two uh, virtual screens onto my laptop making my laptop think there are two devices two monitors connected um, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, plug these in to the laptop which I'll show via color pass through and then we'll see the two extra monitors appear on the Quest 3 headset um, links to these that the ones I got for, for these will be in the description they're just on Amazon I think they were about 15 pounds for two think the came as a two pack but I will link to them really simple to use I've never seen them before until I, until I was reading about how to how to basically output from a laptop um, and ways different ways of doing it to create another virtual desktop um, so yeah these are great and they've, they've worked every time for me no problem and it does allow you to get the 4k uh, resolution as well which gives you a better view in VR Okay, so we're in color pass through. We've just shown the um, that remote display uh, application. Now we're gonna go to the laptop and connect things in. So this is the beauty of color pass through. I can still be doing things. I don't know if you can see perfectly from the from this recording, but you can see in the low light, it does struggle a little bit. Um, it's like a little bit grainy, more grainy in low light. You can see if I look over there, um, but it's still a really good experience. I can see what I'm doing. I can check my phone. I could get a drink of coffee, a drink of water, for example, over here. Uh, not a problem at all there so let's get these i've simply got uh, a couple of usb dongles um so i've got this one um which is a kingston one uh, which i'm going to plug into my laptop so luckily i've got a couple of usb c ports on this laptop so i've got that one and i've got this other one so i've got the dongle hdmi dongle plugged in there hdmi dongle plugged in there and I can just, before I do anything, use my laptop to come out of here. And there we go. So if I jump into uh, settings, and I'll show you, in fact, what well, I won't show you, what, let me jump in, back into workrooms. So we're going to Horizon workrooms. I'm back into my office environment. Again, with the with the settings I chose last time with the uh, password on the desk, I've got a computer, and it's connected automatically, and now it's given me the three screens, as you can see there. So he would have got, now got, if I'm using my, using my mouse, which is connected to my laptop, uh, which I can see, because I've got the pass-through. If I go into display, you can see the three monitors. So I've got my, my original screen of my laptop, and I've got two, and then three, which are the dongles I've got plugged into the into there. Let me just get rid of that. So if I scroll down here, you can see, hopefully, um, display resolution of three is that, and of two is that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna knock this resolution up to 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. Okay, so you can see it crashed there, it didn't like that. So I'm not sure it's I've got the two monitors, the two separate monitors connected, it didn't like that. Um, so it's gone to 1920 by 1200. I'm gonna knock it up a little bit, see if we can get anything out. So we'll go 2560 by 1440. See if it'll allow us to do that. It's not liking that, I don't think either. Oh, it is. oh no, no. So it's dropping back to more more of an HD rather than 4K. 
Um, this could be, I'm not sure, because I've got the two, two connectors, so it can't output to two 4K monitors, perhaps, um, while well, it thinks what are 2K monitors. But you can see here anyway, uh, with both of them, number three being on 1920 by 1200, which is above HD actually, because it should be 1080. Um, and then that one there, so you've got two and three here. So let me just get this out of the way. So you can see here, I can look around, it's going to be 360 view, and I can see the two, uh, the, sorry, the three monitors. So the single um, laptop monitor in the middle, and then the uh, number two and number three either side. If I want to, I can obviously use my mouse and I can move things between the windows as I would be able to do on my actual machine. Um, I've got my Edge browser here, which again, I can move there. And it kind of gives you an indication of, of the text and the font and how readable and how usable it is. I found on the Quest 2 when trying this out, I would use it for say a half an hour and my eyes would hurt because kind of the, the font would be terrible, the text would be terrible to read. But this you can really, you can see the clarity even on the slightly lower resolution than I want it to be. So still on the 1920 by 1200, but you can see how usable that is there. That is um, it's quite impressive actually. So if I just jump between different pages on here, you see it work in terms of the refresh rate working on there, which is shouldn't be a problem. So we'll scroll down this page, see if we can find a video. I don't have any cop kind of copyright. You can see a video there. Refresh rate is absolutely fine. Obviously, so that's probably just a gif that's just uh, playing over and over. Um, see there some of the accessories that are available for the Meta Quest 3 from Meta. So there you, there you go, so you've got the three the three different monitors there uh, showing fine. So just, just the last thing I wanted to show you just on this view, if I take my, um, my controller, you see if I hover over this, this screen or hover over this screen with my controller pointer, I can move that one to the center, which should swap, um, which should kind of move things around. So it doesn't swap the monitors around, it kind of just shifts the whole circle around. So again, if I go there, and click on move to center it shifts that round on to, around to the center it would be good if you could kind of maybe press and hold and move it around uh, but yeah if you want to quickly move to center you can do and it's pretty quick so you can just flick it right that like that but in terms of this view it's not too difficult just to twist and look and uh, use obviously use those different monitors kind of a massive scale so if it was to say from a from a like a human eye perspective looking at them I would say if I was sat in a room, this monitor size would probably be around maybe like a 65 inch screen, it looks like. Um, so, three 65, screen, uh, 65 inch screens in front of me is kind of what it looks like, possibly even bigger, to be honest with you, in terms of the perspective you get from actually being sat in front of it. Okay, just last thing to show just before we do it, it's supposed to be just a really quick demo just to kind of demonstrate what, what the possibility is with this. Uh, but the three screens there looking great, obviously with edge on this screen, middle screen there and settings on there. So I just want to show you just in terms of a latency and, and, and actually using it, realistically using the screens like this. Uh, I've just opened Solitaire and Casual Games here. So if I go into Solitaire, um, not that I play Solitaire, but I just kind of the first thing for the menus I found. Um, oh, I've played it before. So let's play that and go next, next, let's close, in fact, let's close that. Um, so this just gives you an idea of being able to actually use um, use it. Um, so if I just flick on here, you can hopeful, hopefully see the kind of refresh rate working absolutely fine there. Um, so I go with an ace on there, uh, just to really quickly show you. So it, the kind of movement from my mouse to actually it working in real life is actually really good. It's quite impressive. Um, latency wise, obviously depending on your network and if it's loads of stuff going on your network it may slow down things on Wi-Fi because everything's connected via Wi-Fi um, but yeah it's really usable and I can flick easily just go over here and flip between my tabs on here uh, open a new tab you've got a Microsoft start page there um, so as you can see things load absolutely fine just like they would on your PC um, and I can flick back to Solitaire and carry on, carry on my game of Solitaire. Okay, all done there on the headset now. Um, connected up to those three virtual monitors. Obviously one being physical, two tricking the laptop into thinking there is two more monitors connected. Um, overall, really impressed with that. 
Um, I have tried to use this on the MetaQuest 2 previously, and I'll be honest, the, as the resolution on the screen, on the actual headset aren't as good, isn't as good, um, the, the kind of text and the imagery on the, on the remote desktop connection wasn't great on the Quest 2. The step up on the Quest 3 makes the experience tons better, miles better, even with the reduced resolution on those screens which you saw, um, which I didn't think would happen because I'm pretty sure I've got the 4K working previously, but perhaps maybe on only one monitor, so I might have to test that again uh, in the future. Uh, but yeah, three monitors working absolutely fine, multitasking between the different monitors. You can then go into colour pass-through if you wanted to, so if you're sat in an environment where you want colour pass-through, uh, you could be sat anywhere really with the three screens in front of you. Um, and then you can see the desk pass through as well, showing the view on your desk of where your laptop, sorry, where your laptop is, yeah. Keyboard, mouse, drink, phone, anything there. And because of that color pass through now on the Quest 3, and also, obviously it's available on the Quest Pro, uh, but on the Quest 3, it makes the experience much, much easier. You can use your keyboard, you can see your mouse, you can use your mouse. Um, you can obviously get grab a drink if you need to. Just makes things tons easier, miles easier. So this was only intended to be really a quick demo just to show you the capability. Obviously I've only really scratched the, scratched the surface really of what's capable probably um, in terms of being able to be immersed in a PC environment. Um, with no wires, totally, wire, totally wireless as well. So you could have this running on um, a desktop PC or a laptop in one room of your house. Um, as long as your mouse and keyboard are connected via Bluetooth, you could be sat in another room using it. Um, so I've, I've used that previously. I've been had my laptop connected uh, downstairs on a dining table and been able to sit there with a simply with a keyboard and mouse with three virtual screens in front of you, working on your laptop. Um, so I can definitely see um, some great possibilities with this. Um, if you know if you don't have the money for uh, monitors or don't have the space for monitors or you're in an environment with with no monitors, um, you can use those adapters with a dongle or directly into your PC to trick your PC into thinking you've got monitors connected, which is really cool. Again, I'll link in the description to, to where I got mine from. So yeah, really cool, really easy to do, all free in terms of the uh, MetaQuest remote desktop application on your PC. Um, and if you only do have one monitor or one single screen in your laptop, it kind of gives you that immersive view within the workrooms application on the, on the Quest, um, kind of into a different uh, quiet environment. Quickly just before we finish, I just wanted to point out, I am aware of other applications that are out there uh, for the MetaQuest 3. So you've got the V Spatial application uh, and you've got the Immersed application. I have tried both of those um, and I find them as they've got more features, so they're more feature rich in terms of what you can do within the applications and the settings and tweaking things. Uh, but from a simplicity perspective, setting things up and getting going, Meta, the Workrooms application, in my opinion is much better. Um, it's cleaner, it's simpler to do, it's less to get wrong, <laughs> um, and it just seems to be more stable as well. Um, it just, you've got that that fixed environment, so you've only got the three, you've got three screens, you can't move them around, you can't switch what you're doing with them. But if you only want quite a simplistic setup, the Workrooms application, in my opinion, is actually better than the vSpatial and Immersed ones. If you are looking for further settings to tweak, um, connecting to multiple devices at one time, you will probably need the vSpatial application. I would say the vSpatial one is better than Immersed um, in terms of what you can do with it. Immersed is a little simpler to set up than the vSpatial. Um, so they've all got the pros and cons of kind of what your needs are for uh, for that virtual immersed environment you want. But for me personally, for what I need it for, just getting going, getting th three or one, two or three virtual screens in front of you, the Workrooms application is the one to go with. So if you're using um, any of those applications I mentioned, um, the Workrooms application, the Immersed application or vSpatial application, let me know in the comments section uh, how you've been getting along with it, which one's your favourite, have you tried them all, are there others that I'm not aware of, they are the only three I think that I'm really aware of and obviously you've got that new one that's within the uh, within the Quest 3 that's a beta as well. Uh, so let me know in the comments section any, any tips you've got from your experiences as well. Um, so everyone can obviously learn from each other and I can learn from other people. Um, so hopefully you've liked this video, it's been informative, been useful. If so, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If not for any reason, give it a thumbs down, give it a dislike. Let me know in the comment section why. Any questions about what I've been through, 
any further information or anything I didn't cover, ask any questions, I'll answer any questions or comments in the comment section. Um, if you want to follow the Houston DIY journey along for more videos on the Quest 3, some baking, cooking, home DIY projects, tons of stuff going on on the channel, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.